So we begin today with the fact that 300 newspapers, 300 newspapers across the country have all decided that it is deeply necessary and important to come out against President Trump. 300 newspapers all across the country. This thing was led by the Boston Globe. The Boston Globe coordinated this entire shtick. And I guess the idea here is to show that the media is not in collusion against President Trump by colluding against President Trump. It makes perfect sense all the way across the board. The Boston Globe has its own very long editorial all about this, and they write, a central pillar of President Trump's politics is a sustained assault on the free press. Journalists are not classified as fellow Americans, but rather the enemy of the people. This relentless assault on the free press has dangerous consequences. We asked editorial boards from across the country, liberal and conservative, large and small, but mostly liberal, to join us today to address this fundamental threat in their own words. And there are hundreds of editorials, and they show some poll results about how much Americans trust the press. And what these poll results show, it's kind of fascinating, is that it's not just a matter of conservatives not trusting the press. A lot of people don't trust the press. About 26% of all independents say the news media are the enemy of the American people. That's registered independents, not Republicans, not Democrats. And when you look at the numbers with regard to, for example, the New York Times, what you see is that only about 37% of independents actually, about 37% believe the New York Times is untrustworthy, about 60% believe it's trustworthy. Well, you would figure that independents, if the New York Times were actually trustworthy, independents would be up near 100%. You would figure Republicans would be 100% against, Democrats would be 100% for, and independents would be 100% for, because independents are independent-minded. Instead, it turns out that the New York Times can only get about 6 in 10 even from independents. But I guess we're supposed to believe that all of the distrust of the media began with President Trump. And that's what the Boston Globe says. The Boston Globe says that the president is stoking domestic division for political and personal gain. He's asking his audiences to follow him into Fantasia. Is they quote President Trump saying this, just stick with us. Don't believe the crap you see from these people, the fake news. Just remember, what you're seeing and what you're reading is not what's happening. And the Boston Globe says this sounds like George Orwell's 1984. The problem, of course, is that the media have been engaged in undermining their own credibility for quite a while now. The, the suggestion that the media are just good stewards of the truth and that only when President Trump levels these unfair, nasty attacks at people, that's when things go wrong. It's just not true in any sense. There's no evidence for it. Okay? The, in fact, the evidence is all on the other side. Republicans have been anti-media since long before I was born. I, mean, I was writing about how terrible the media was when I first started writing when I was 17 years old. The media has been garbage when it comes to reporting an objective truth for as long as I have been alive and as long as many of the people in this audience have been alive. And then they're shocked when President Trump says this is all fake news and then people will start to ignore the news. Well, President Trump wasn't going to leave well enough alone. President Trump jumped on Twitter and did what President Trump does best. That's right, dude said some crap. Because that's a shtick, right? As I say many times on the show, the president uh, on his headstone, you know, when his time comes after 120 years, when the president goes, on his headstone, it'll say 45th president of the United States, he said a lot of crap. So here's what President Trump had to, had to say, he said, the fake news media is the opposition party. It is very bad for our great country, but we are winning. <laughs> and it's hard not to see the fake news media as the opposition party when 300 of them are coordinating to attack the administration and to attack Trump. Remember, what President Trump has done in terms of policy to crack down on the news media is not even remotely comparable to what the Obama administration actually did to crack down on certain members of the news media. They legitimately wiretapped people like James Rosen at Fox News. They wiretapped the Associated Press. So President Trump says many things, but I think a lot of that's become background noise is the truth. Most Americans know that when President Trump says stuff, it's because he says a lot of stuff. But don't worry, he said more stuff. So here is what he said. He said, now this one is real galaxy brain. I, I, I can't really, I, I, I puzzled over this one for a while, and I couldn't come to any clear conclusion as to what it's supposed to say. Maybe we are just, maybe, maybe he's operating on a different plane. I mean, I think he is, but I don't think it's the way that most people think he is. Here, here's what he says. The Boston Globe, which was sold to the failing New York Times for $1.3 billion, plus $800 million in losses and investment, or $2.1 billion, was then sold by the Times for $1. Now the Globe is in collusion with other papers on free press. Prove it.
I sort of feel like Winona Ryder at the Oscars. I'm just kind of looking around randomly, trying to figure out what exactly this is supposed to mean. I mean, it is good to know the president can add together 1.3 billion and 800 million. That's good. Right, that part of his math is good. But I don't know what the rest of this tweet means. I'm not, I'm not sure. And then what I like at the very end is when he says, prove it. Like, he's going to say, prove it. And Inspector Clouseau is going to bust through the doors. Like, I have the proof. Right, Sherlock Holmes is going to wander into his office and say, uh, sir, I've proven it. Like, I don't, I don't understand what this is. But, but, you know, president saying stuff, and the stuff continues. So he finishes up this way. He says, there is nothing that I would want more for our country than true freedom of the press. The fact is that the press is free to write and say anything it wants. But much of what it says is fake news, pushing a political agenda, or just plain trying to hurt people. Honesty wins. Okay, so, again, I have a lot of sympathy for this position. There's a certain irony, just to be perfectly frank, in the president placing in all capital letters, uh, letters honesty wins. But, I mean, even with that said, what he is saying is basically true. And, and the media cannot fathom why it is that so many people do not trust them. Well, the clearest example of why people do not trust the mainstream media to be found is the narrative over the past 48 hours over the taking away of John Brennan's security clearance. So John Brennan was the head of the CIA under Barack Obama, and John Brennan is a garbage heap. John Brennan is just terrible. John Brennan lied to the American Congress, and he full-scale lied to them. He said that people weren't being surveilled when they were being surveilled. And John Brennan was instrumental in pushing in information that was not good enough to actually indict President Trump on or to get the Trump campaign on with regard to collusion. He was instrumental in pushing all of that information over to Harry Reid. He was instrumental in making sure that all of it hit the press. And then he goes on television and he says a lot of things about how collusion is real. He has an editorial in the New York Times today about how collusion is real. I kid you not. Right? It's, it's a full-on editorial, and the title of it is President Trump's Claims of No Collusion Are Hogwash. That is the name of the column. And then he goes through about 800 words, and you're waiting for him to actually prove this thing. Okay, well, if you are the big truth teller, if you are the great truth teller who ought to retain your security clearance, maybe you ought to provide some proof that the collusion actually happened. But you get all the way through the article, and there's nothing there. Right? Here's what he says. He says, Mr. Trump's claims of no collusion are, in a word, hogwash. The only questions that remain are whether the collusion that took place constituted criminally liable conspiracy, whether obstruction of justice occurred to cover up any collusion or conspiracy, and how many members of Trump Incorporated attempted to defraud the government by laundering and concealing the movement of money into their pockets. Now, I need to take that more slowly so you understand how absurd that statement is. Right? He says, There's no, the, the, the claims of no collusion are hogwash. The only things we have to know are, were there, what, did collusion happen? That's really what he's saying. He's saying, Absolutely collusion happened. The only question yet to be answered is whether collusion actually happened. <laughs> and then he cites Paul Manafort, who there are no accusations in the Paul Manafort trial that Paul Manafort actually colluded with the Russians to affect the election in any way. That is not part of Paul Manafort's trial. By the way, Paul Manafort may get off. The jury sent a note to the judge today asking the definition of reasonable doubt. I used to work in a prosecutor's office. That's never a good sign. <laughs> he says that Rick Gates, Right, he says, Rick Gates is involved in collusion. Again, there is no evidence that Rick Gates is involved in any collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. All of the charges with regard to Manafort and Gates predate their involvement with the Trump campaign. But Brendan concludes his piece in the New York Times thusly. He says, Mr. Trump clearly has become more desperate to protect himself and those close to him, which is why he made the politically motivated decision to revoke my security clearance in an attempt to scare into silence others who might dare challenge him. Yes, clearly Brendan has been frightened into silence in the pages of the New York Times. Clearly, the president has been uber successful at shutting John Brennan down. So he says that it's important that the special counsel do his work. So the entire left has come out in support of John Brennan, ignoring the fact that John Brennan has been a corrupt official, that he has been extraordinarily political since leaving office. And honestly, there should be a blanket rule that when you leave office and you're no longer part of the administration, you probably should lose your security clearance anyway. I'm, I'm very confused. I'm confused by folks who say that there's some sort of right to keep your security clearance after you leave office. Like, do you really think the Trump administration is going to call up John Brennan for advice? It's never going to happen. There's no reason for any of that to happen. But the media have jumped on this with both feet. So the argument from the left with regard to John Brennan is that John Brennan actually had a right to keep his security clearance. Now, President Trump did what President Trump does, as I've said many times. He said stuff about this. Now, he didn't actually have to say stuff about this. What he should have just said is, yeah, John Brennan, didn't like that guy. He worked for the Obama administration. Don't trust him. No security clearance. Instead, he decided that he was going to do a 20-minute impromptu interview with the Wall Street Journal. 
I swear, I'm being President Trump's handler. It's like watching my two and a half year old son. I, you just, I'm rooting for him, but I know that if I don't watch him for five seconds, he's gonna break his face on something. <laughs> so he told the Wall Street Journal during this 20 minute impromptu interview, he said, I called the rigged witch hunt a sham and these people let it. So I think it's something that had to be done. Okay, well, that's partially true. But the problem is when it makes it look like it's a political hit, when it looks like you're, you're pursuing a political hit against your political opponents, people are likely going to complain about it and complain that their First Amendment rights have been violated, that you're discriminating against them on the basis of their politics from a governmental point of view. All he had to do was just say, listen, I don't, John Brennan's security clearance is gone. Instead, he listed basically all the people he doesn't like, and then he said, I'm taking your secu security clearance, which isn't supremely smart. However, the overblown reaction to this is truly something to watch. So John Brennan, Right, who is a hysterical, hissy, just pissy human being. John Brennan goes on national television and he starts ranting and raving about tyrants and despots. Remember, this is the guy who lied to the Congress of the United States about whether he is spying on you. And he is talking about how it's tyrannical despotism for his security clearance that he hasn't used in over two years to be removed from him. John Brennan, one of the geniuses of our age. I've seen this type of behavior and actions on the part of foreign tyrants and despots and autocrats for many, many years during my CIA and national security career. I never, ever thought that I would see it here in the United States. Absolutely Hitlerian. How dare somebody remove a piece of paper he wasn't using and that he had no right to have in the first place? How dare this happen? And the media, of course, blow this up to gargantuan proportions. They find everyone they can to come out and talk about this. The latest person who they have brought out to talk about this is retired Admiral William McRaven, most famous for having been the guy who oversaw the, the operation that ended with the death of Osama bin Laden. So there's a full op-ed in the Washington Post by Admiral McRaven talking about how terrible it is that John Brennan security clearance was removed. And here is what his op-ed had to say. He said, few Americans have done more to protect this country than John. He is a man of unparalleled integrity, whose honesty and character have never been in question, except by those who don't know him, and people who watch TV. I mean, Admiral McRaven did some wonderful things, but Admiral McRaven is, in fact, a Democrat who doesn't like President Trump. He's spoken out against President Trump many times before, and yet this is being touted as some sort of great evidence that President Trump did something deeply wrong. Now, the hilarious thing is that past administrations have use their power to strip paperwork away from people before. You remember early on in the Clinton administration, for example, they removed a bunch of people in the travel office, in the travel office, who they didn't like. And it was called Travelgate and nothing ever came of it. This sort of thing isn't remarkably uncommon, but the fact the media decided to overblow it, it's just more evidence that the media are who the media are, which is why they feel the necessity to, in unison, all 300 papers, unite and talk about President Trump.